Right, in this video we're going to do a kit I've never done before. Right, I have a nice piece of tiger wood between centers here. Now, the kit, as I said, it's one I haven't done before. Now, when I need to order stuff, uh, pen kits and that kind of stuff, my wife actually does the buying for me just so that I don't have to do it. It just saves me time. And every now and again, she comes across something that she'd like herself. And what she came across was this. Right, it's a coffee cup. Right. Now, as I said, it's one I haven't done before. So, uh, basically, we're going to go through this and uh, we learn together, I suppose. Because, as I said, I haven't done this one before. Sorry, I bumped the camera there. Um, right, so it could be an interesting one. Uh, anybody who has done one of these before, if at the end of the video they they know fast away or something, you know, just drop it in the comments, or even better, if you've done a video on it. Uh, and a better way of doing it, just drop it below and I'll highlight it. I know Lisa has done one, that's Lisa Ramel, has done one of these. And I'll leave a link to Lisa's video up there, and below of course, I'll leave a, I'll leave a link to her um, channel below. Right, so uh, the first thing I'm going to do is round this off. Now, the st I know they, because of the width that I need for this kit, the tolerances are quite tight. So I've got to be very careful to not make this too small. As I said, the tolerances on this are quite tight. Uh, my wife would like this done in tiger wood. This blank is three and three quarter inches. I would advise if you can to use a four inch blank. Here's some room for play with. It's up here, up at the top, especially up to watch the size. Uh, the tolerances on this seem to be quite tight. Right, I'm not worried about that because the whole thing tapers, so we'll be able to take that out. Right, now we'll just square everything up, get a tenon off, we'll stick it in a chuck, and see how we go. Right then, it looks like there might be a slight crack there. So, just to be on the safe side, I'm going to throw some CA in there. So, just to be on the safe side. Just in case the drips. Give that a minute to go off. I'll be back now. Alright, now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to size both ends. It's probably the best way of doing it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to oversize them slightly. Little bit of oversize there, plus I have the width of the steel there. So a whole lot of something there. Right. Now I'm going 
must have caught that on something. Okay, hopefully you can see this. See where that's not straight. There seems to be a chip out of there. Right, so that has to be re round Because that will not work. Right, if, you ever, if you're ever doing something and you see there's something wrong with the edge of one of your tools, stop what you're doing, re -grind the flipping thing. It's, it's worth doing. Following force is probably the way to go on this. Now, it just so happens the drill bit I bought for the bases has also be the right size to the bottom of this. So, we might as well use it. All I've got to do is find out how deep we have to go. Put that up there. Move all this to there. Now, on the bottom of this, there's a little bump. So when you're hollowing or drilling, remember to go down to the bottom of that bump, not to the bottom of this. It's something I spotted when I was looking at the cave post. Do a little bit of 400. It's too fast. So it's a drill bit. Got to work out two hundred. There's a certain balance you get. Between uh, the torque and the drill bit and drilling, there's a certain balance you'll hit where the drill bit holds nicely and doesn't twist. this out so that the cup actually fits in. Use a ball gouge for that. When you're doing this is to make sure that your cutting edge is on center when you're back home like this. 
too white and you'll catch too long and you won't cook properly. Let's look at it. Speed up at it. One up to a thousand. Basically what I'm doing is a nice gentle pull. If I get the calipers and slide them either side of that, that should give me a clue, shouldn't it? I this top. Okay, not much in it. Out there. So there's not a lot in it. Right, what I've done is I've walked my way back getting narrower and narrower and now what I should have is a straight cut line going like that. See it. See there's a shoulder there. What I've done is I've come down straight as if that was tapered up to there. But I need to drop further there. So I need to get square up there a bit. scratching this. I think it will risk scratching that. Oh, that's a good fit. Alright, so that's something I've learned is to watch that because it straightens out there and there's like a bump there and then it starts to go over down. It's not a straight slant all the way up to the rim. Yeah, that's a good one. Right, okay. As I said, we learn this one as we're going. Now, the tails look like in there, to make sure that thing doesn't move. Start shaping the outside of this. And what I'll do is I'll bring this down first to get it to fit that, and then just keep kind of testing it until I get it right. This is 
just going to be trial and error. Same as the steel now. Right, let's go take a whip of the steel off. Needs to be a bit hollowed out a little bit more down lower. So we get that bit done. I'd say that this is probably the most difficult part that is <laughs> getting this fit right. And check the cutting is on center if it is. Speed back up. Let's check it again. You have to clean in there out. <laughs> is I'm going to do the bottom because you won't actually see it whereas if I do that rim you might Slightly take a tiny bit off that rim. Let's see if that's it. There's some friggin' in this kit. Top shoulder again here. Okay, so we'll try the top shoulder again and see if it's it. This is, this is probably the biggest bit of this. Hmm. 
enjoying this one because it's a bit of a challenge because it's something new. So I'm actually quite enjoying this. I enjoy doing the new ones, ones there, as I said. A little bit of a challenge there. And I like a bit of a challenge. The problem is I don't often get them anymore. Fit. This is going to be getting epoxied in anyway. Now I need to get this end down to the rim of that. But I don't want to get it right down to it. I want to leave enough room for sanding. Right. Sorry, somebody at the door. Back in a sec. Right then. It's a nice fit, it's not moving at all. Good. Right. Where I want to put the epoxy is around here. Right. I don't want to put epoxy on the rim at all because it could squeeze out and ruin the finish. But yeah, that, that's not moving, that's going to be good. Now, next job is to get this edge down to the size I need. This thing doesn't move. I've just done all this without the mic plugged in. Unbelievable. Right, I'm gonna have to mess with the sound, guys, because I just did all that without the mic being plugged in. Great. Right. I'll have to see if I can mess with the sound. If I can't mess with the sound, I'll have to do this video again. Right, now, as I said, Try and get this down to the right size. Now, probably the easiest way of doing this is get that out of the way, put that there, spin it up a little, and put a pencil mark. That's not a very good pencil mark. Spin it up and put a pencil mark. That's probably the best way of doing this. Ooh, there isn't much in that. Alright then. Now, yeah, let's bring that down. Right. 
check that. Yeah, bang on. Right, so I need to come from that down and shape it. Right, I'm gonna slide tape on it. I will grab my favourite spindle gouge. try and do is follow the shape of the uh, of the mug itself right which means there's a shoulder to about there and then I come in Check thickness here. It's not all that thick. Right then. Let's do a clean up cut on it. again right I'm gonna fill that because that is actually quite pretty so I'll fill that and then I'll sand this right. and there's a very nice finish cut on that so it's not going to take a lot of sanding which is what I was aiming for because I don't want to bring that down too low that crack that I filled at the start it's still there right. so we will do another clean up cut on that because there's a lot of CA there
a little faster this time. Thanks. See how that there to sand off. Yeah. Right, Grant. Now I'll sand and finish that. And I'll be back for the yard track with a bit, which as I said it's quite an amusing one this week. Kind of a, a tall tail that I'm trying to back for it a bit. But uh back for it in kind of a good way. Alright then, this week's the Archer Grip bit. This is another tall tile from Puck. And it, as I said earlier on, it kind of backfired, but it backfired in a good way. A uh, very unexpected way, actually. Right, so, there was uh, an American couple over for Puck. Apparently, the husband's ancestors come from Cologne and they'd always heard about Puck so they'd always want to come so they were in the pub yapping away to the locals and of course the tall tail started flying right. so the American couple brought up the look of the Irish and one of the boys hopped on this of course right. Now, this one I can't verify, but it came from the same source as the Mel Gibson one. Right, so, by there, more on the side, more on the sides of possibility, rather than just complete figment. Right, so anyway, the look of the Irish thing came up, and this American couple. It was the last night, and so they were listening intently to all the stories. So, uh, as I said, the tall tale came out, and the tall tale was that during Puck Fair, the luckiest thing you can do is to catch some, basically, poo from the goat, right, before it hits the ground. Right? Now, this was with the old stand. The old stand you could go under and stuff. The new one you can't, it's all security and everything else. But this was with the old stand. So, anyway, the tall tale was said, and nothing much was talked, not much was thought about it afterwards. It was a typical tall tale from Ireland. The phone started at the next puck fair. The American couple had come over again. And they went looking for the guy who had told them the story. Right. Now look the first day looking for him. Right. And of course, word had got to him that this American couple that he told this tall tale to last year were looking for him. So he kind of didn't know what to make of it. But he did as everybody does a puck and just kept going. So anyway, on the second night they found him. And they were all excited to find him. So he uh, they found as I said they found him and sat down beside him and bought him a drink. And he was kind of confused. So they told him what had happened. He said the husband, apparently, had taken this tall tale to heart and had gone out and had spent hours under the puck stand, right? And he eventually found, he eventually found, he was waiting to catch poo, right? But he eventually found some that was actually on one of the cross beams, right? It hadn't hit the ground, so he took it. And they went home and they found out that while 
basically they were on the plane home they had won the state lottery and they were completely convinced that this tall tale of cash and poke poo before it hits the ground was responsible for this that it had brought them luck so they came back the next year to find this lad to thank him and for the whole of poke fair he didn't have to pay for a drink and everybody went away happy as I said it's a funny one but uh, funny in a good way I said everybody kind of came out on top with it the couple were delighted because they had won the state lottery uh, you know, don't ask me how much it was I have no idea I don't know much about the American state lottery uh, but as I said everybody was happy and uh, it ended up as a pretty nice story oh that's gonna be nice right so now next week's one I'm gonna actually answer a question from a subscriber yeah again an American guy but he's coming over here for the first time and he wants to know because things mean different things over here he wants to know kind of what could cause him a problem if he picks it up wrong so what I'm going to go through next week is stuff that's said here that means something completely different somewhere else so I'll be back when I'm putting the wax on this so I'll see you in a minute right then just buffer the wax off now if I had the one of those spits for turning chickens on grills I probably would have done this in resin the uh, finish just for durability because of what this is but uh, the wax should be fine it turned out very pretty that is pretty that's gonna make a stunning cup all right all that's left for me to do is part this off and epoxy the top on finish off the bottom and we should be good so I'll be back when I do all that and I'll see you in a minute Right, and there we have it, a Tigerwood coffee cup. Uh, quite pleased with the way that came out, actually. Right, now I have decided not to epoxy that top in because it's a fantastic fit, it's going nowhere, right? But for cleaning, you can pull it out and just clean that bit, and this bit never has to go into water. You see? Right. So it's tight there. But push it down and kind of suctions in so I'm actually delighted with that with the fit hopefully my wife is happy with it so if you enjoyed that one if you wouldn't mind clicking thumbs up and I'll see you in the next one